gonna have a video message. We're in the home stretch, but in the home stretch, we debunk with the debunkinator himself, the empresario of logic, logic, Ben Burgess. All right, Ben, just yeah. give us, you're just gonna do a rapid fire round of some of the worst violations of logic and reason of the last year. Go. All right, well, one of the ones that comes to mind is a uh, friend of the show, Jordan Peterson. In, uh, so he did a debate, you might remember, in the last year with Slavoj Zizek. Go yeah. oh, Slavoj! And so, as anybody would, if you're going to debate one of the world's most prominent Marxist intellectuals, he uh, skimmed the Communist Manifesto. <laughs> I read some of it. <laughs> I was ready. And, I made a mistake, and I read a fourth of the book. And he had a vague impression that it was bad. <laughs> um, and that was, that was his argument, that the Communist Manifesto was bad, and he understood that Slavoj Žižek has some thoughts that have something to do with Marx, and so he's bad, and uh, that was pretty much his case. That was it, and Slavo beat him. <laughs> yes, he did. Very soundly. So the, I built an entire brand about fear-mongering, about human liberation, and I haven't even read the fucking foundational texts. It didn't turn out so well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> like literally, it was the easy, I mean, you know, Slavoj Žižek has done so much. He's written these like 500 page books where he strings together psychoanalysis and history and sociology. And all he had to do for this debate was be like, uh, I, I did the reading. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, it was brilliant that he was polite too. That was so savvy. All right, what's the next? All right, the next comes from, this is a group effort by every single centrist running for president right now. Um, because they all have argued against Medicare for all on the grounds, on, on the grounds that it violates freedom of choice. You should just have Medicare for all who want it. No. Because if you think about freedom of choice and freedom and determining the course of your own life, you don't really care very much about freedom to decide where you work or who you're married to. Because freedoms like this are actually undermined by the system of private health insurance because people stay in jobs they hate. People stay yeah. in failing marriages because they don't want to lose their health insurance. <laughs> no, the kind of freedom that really matters is the freedom to decide between Aetna and Blue Cross Blue Shields. <laughs> That's, you know, that's the kind of freedom that defines you, you know, that you get to make that choice. You can wait on hold for customer service to explain to you that your kid can't get chemo treatment, and you feel freedom. Yeah, well, you have to keep in mind, these are two entirely different customer service representatives that you can be on hold with. Right. Well, freedom. Yeah, exactly. Corporate bureaucracy is freedom. Um, according to Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, Joe Biden, and Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> I'm not, I'm sorry, the whole Rube Goldberg healthcare thing is not working. <laughs> need to try to do this. No, 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 no. She, she's there, uh, as, as our friend in New Hampshire would put it, she's there in principle. <laughs> she's a lefty from way back, that much back. <laughs> way back, way back. Uh, ten years or more. <laughs> ben, what's, and look, props for those ten years. No, props for those 10 years, but when you say, like, I don't know, I mean, I might think that this is important because lots of people are going to die if we don't have it. And so when somebody says, oh, they totally support, I'm with Bernie. Right. And then they say, well, okay, uh, we're actually going to do this other thing 
and we're gonna make a major push for an entirely separate healthcare reform. But like, then don't worry, we're totally gonna come back in a couple of years and yeah. support yeah. Medicare for totally. all after that. Totally. She also told me in the same private conversation she wasn't gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Ben, what's number three and four? Quick fire. <laughs> well, number three is from Chris Matthews and a lot of other people who say that Bernie Sanders can't be elected president because he was a socialist in the 1970s and 80s and he took a bunch of socialist positions and uh, I think he reminds Chris of somebody he interacted with at an anti-war rally. I was at a protest in 1969 and, and, it was, and there was, you know, there was groovy chicks and, and I opposed the war. Uh, and, you know, I wanted to meet a girl named Starflower, uh, but I still love Bobby Kennedy and John Kennedy, and I hadn't met Tip O'Neill yet, but I love Tip O'Neill, and Ralph Reagan spoke to the country, and, 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 then, and then there was, you know, this Jew selling newspapers. It was like a multi-level marketing scheme. And I just said, oh my God. You, know, you can, like, oppose the war in Vietnam, but it doesn't mean that you talk about corruption. Bernie. <laughs> Be careful, Bernie, you're interrupting my imaginary friends. And on the subject of why Bernie can't win, to bring us to number four, I know we just talked about this a couple days ago, but I, I literally cannot get over it. It is incomprehensible to me why everybody in the world has not mocked David Frum for saying this. I thought you meant for, like, everything. That he said, this is in The Atlantic, you can read this, he really said this that if Bernie Sanders is the nominee, Donald Trump is going to run against him by talking about Bernie's, and I quote, toxic masculinity. <laughs> he never, I don't think this guy ever even read Bell Hooks. He's so good to anger, folks, so good to anger. Yeah. But then you ask, he says he's pro, he's pro what's rights, but then you say, how do black bodies feel in his spaces? <laughs> the whole thing's ridiculous. He didn't mention the Kabuki River Collective one time. He didn't mention it. And then he says he's a feminist. But he says he opposes racism, but then you say, what about an intersectional body language? That's good. The whole thing's a disgrace. I was just talking, it was very interesting. I was just talking with Bell Hooks on the phone and she had some very different ideas about Bernie. It was really, it was very interesting. If you talk to the intersectional working groups, they had, they had microaggressions like you wouldn't believe. Total disgrace. So, he said she came to the room. Bernie starts talking about social security. And she said, are you gonna ask me about my lived experience? I don't think so. <laughs> Bernie doesn't ask about lived experience. It's toxic, it's toxic folks. All right, we need to build a wall that will electrocute people. <laughs> Time for the other part of my speech. That's it. Three and four were about speculations about why Bernie, according to these people, won't win and can't win. I think it's only fair to have number five be about a topic that's already come up a little bit, but I mean, I just find really confusing and I start to wonder if I'm missing something because it, it seems like as far as like, you know, logic goes, thinking about how arguments fit together. Uh, this one seems pretty straightforward to me, but I thought, I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe this is just embarrassing that, like, I thought this and nobody else did. But I thought that if you got more votes, then you, can't you win! win! Yeah. Because Bernie won Iowa! Yeah. Is that not how that works? As Pete Buttigieg said, with the rules of sound simple minded, I, I think we ought to, whoever gets the most votes, win. Yeah, he said that three months ago. Ben Burgess, you are the absolute best. We love you. That's the host of the Debunk. You can hear him every week. Check out, give them an argument logic for the left. Uh, guys, we're going to get some chairs together, and then everybody's going to come up on stage, and we're going to play a quick game, and then have a quick video before we wrap up. Are we getting the chairs? 
All right. I guess, uh, Ben, how's it going? How's life? <laughs> how's life in Logic Land? <laughs> Have I persuaded you in homeopathy yet? <laughs> uh, no, but you're getting there on astrology. That's right. That's right, because astrology is cool. Shouts to Nomiki, fellow astrology lover, Nomiki Kong. Is everybody coming out on stage? I think we've got everybody's mics. We can have